My name is Crystal and I'm with Benefits Administration. We have partnered with Optum Financial to bring you a series of webinars on the HSA and FSA products throughout the year. Today, we are going to be talking about eligible expenses. Before we get started, let's go over a few housekeeping items. Everyone's line has been placed on mute. If you'd like to ask a question, please do that through chat. If you think of a question, go ahead and send it to us in the chat box and we'll answer questions at the end of the program. The recorded version of this webinar will be available in about two weeks. It will be located on our Flexible Benefits webpage and I will put a link to that in the chat box. Now I'm going to turn over the program to our account executive from Optum Financial, Lenny Stelt. Thank you, Crystal. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. I'm going to have a fun topic for you today on eligible expenses or determining what are eligible expenses for health savings accounts, medical FSAs, and limited purpose FSAs. Um, joining me is also uh, a colleague of mine, Nicole Jardine who partners with the state of Tennessee also and is a great resource subject matter expert um, on um, eligible expenses. So we will be um, partnering together during the question period at the end and we'll have plenty of time for that. As you're developing your questions, um, also remember that if you have one-on-one -on -one type questions um, where it's private information, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to discuss that with you. But for our topic today, let's go ahead and get started. Now, when it comes to eligible expenses, the first place we want to start is determining if a medical, dental, or vision expense is eligible to be paid from your HSA or your FSA or you're doing a reimbursement is making sure the expenses for an eligible person. Now on the surface, that's a pretty easy answer. It's you, it's your spouse, or it's any of your tax dependents. Now, just because someone is a dependent on your health plan does not necessarily mean you can use your HSA or your FSA for your expense. Your tax dependent generally means someone you claim as a dependent on your annual tax return. Think about that for your children that are maybe older and filing their own tax return, but still covered under your health plan. You probably can't use your account for them. Now there's some unique situations like shared custody or divorce agreements that make the question of expense eligibility a little less clear for some plan members. Remember the state of Tennessee nor Optum Financial are licensed to provide tax advice However, there are some great resources. We'll call them out on the following pages. You can refer to for some more information. But for now, let's look at an actual expense. Many different types of medical, dental, and vision expenses are deemed eligible by the IRS to use your Optum Payment MasterCard or submit for reimbursement from your HSA or your FSA. The IRS's definition is that the expense is used to diagnose, treat, or prevent a disease. So immediately you think about licensed doctor's appointments to diagnose and treat a condition or prescribe medication to treat a condition or medication that's prescribed to prevent a diagnosed condition from getting worse, like high blood pressure medicine or insulin for diabetes, even prescription glasses to correct nearsightedness. But what if a doctor recommends you or your spouse take some type of vitamin or supplement to treat or prevent a future stroke or heart attack. You can purchase the supplement without a prescription or a doctor's note, but how does Optum Financial as your plan administrator know this was to treat or prevent a disease? You might be asked to have your doctor complete a letter of medical necessity form in lieu of a prescription so you can use your medical FSA to pay for that supplement. Now, where can you go to find out if find out if your expense is eligible. Now, since the IRS makes the rules on all of this, the IRS is a great resource for finding answers. 
IRS Publication 502 covers many common medical expenses, but not every possible medical expense. If you can't find the expense you're looking for, refer to the definition of medical expenses under what are medical expenses in this publication to provide you additional guidance. Publication 969, this is also an IRS publication. It's a great overall tool for identifying whose expenses are eligible. Now, when you make a purchase at an IIAS retailer, that's like Walgreens or CVS, your receipt will indicate approved medical FSA items. IIAS, it's an inventory system that's used by retailers that marks each item in their store as a yes or no as FSA eligible. If it's a yes, your receipt will indicate that next to the item description on your receipt. Now there are public FSA shopping websites like fsastore.com and store.optum.com where all the items you purchase can be FSA eligible. Some might require you obtain your doctor's signature and submit a letter of medical necessity. You can use sites like these to research items or even shop to purchase them if you'd like to. For HSA, medical FSA and limited purpose FSA expenses, you can search the qualified medical expense tool. It's available at optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee. And for today's webinar, we're gonna look at that site and demonstrate how to search for what is eligible. So I'm going to, if you bear with me just one moment, I am gonna bring up that site right now so we can look at it together. And actually, let me start. I'm going to go to your home page. So this hopefully looks familiar to all of you. This is your optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee site where you can go to sign in to your account and also access lots of great resources. One Lenny, excuse me. Lenny. Lenny. Yep. It's, yes, you do not. You're not sharing your the website. Oh, thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. You are right. Let me go back. Hopefully that's our one technical glitch of the day, right? It tells me it's trying to connect, but it looks like it's taking a moment to come up. Hmm. That is very odd. It tells me I am sharing it. Do you still not see it? We can see it now, Lenny. Oh, thank you. All right, perfect. So this, if you're seeing it now, this is your optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee site. Once you're here, you just scroll down through your resources till you get to this section, take control of your health and dependent care expenses. And what we're going to do is click on this blue hyperlink right here to qualified medical expenses. And it'll bring you, to, it's going to bring us to the section with QME, which means qualified medical expense search tool. Now, this is a great tool, but let's please bear in mind that it's not a completely comprehensive list. And the IRS may modify this list throughout the year like it did during the COVID-19 virus outbreak, which resulted in multiple updates to it. Now, you can always consult IRS Publication 969 and 502. We referenced those earlier today, too. And when the IRS resources don't fully address your situation, actually consulting a tax advisor or tax professional will be your best resource. But you can make an initial review at the Qualified Medical Expense Tool. It's going to default to this page where all the expenses in the tool are listed, listed, and you can hover over each one of them to look at an IRS description. And it's funny, the colors on my end are showing up weird. They should be showing green, yellow, and red next to each. Are you seeing that? Lenny, they are not displaying appropriately. We can see the list, but we cannot see the color coding. Okay. 
That's interesting. I'm going to stop sharing this one moment and bring it up one more time, you guys, because I want you to see the full resource if we can. Let me go back to the meeting. One person on the call has said the Optum site is down and another person has said it is working on his browser. Well, I appreciate that help and feedback. I am re going into the site and checking it. Hmm. That is the version that I am getting. So I am going to go back and share what I have. I don't know, uh, Nicole, if you're getting a different version. I want it up right now to check, but it looks the same to me as well, Lenny. Okay. I can see your colors now. Okay. Mine just flipped. So something odd just happened. So we're going to roll with this while we can. I apologize everybody, but, um, you know, that's what happens in the world of technology. Hopefully you're seeing the colors now. And as I hover over these, we're seeing an IRS description for each one. When we explore this tool, um, the color coding is one of the primary indicators because typically if it's green that's covered expense if it's yellow it could be a covered expense with certain um criteria and red it's probably not a covered expense at all but while we're in here it is defaulting to sort of a comprehensive list you see we haven't indicated a particular account type like an hsa or a medical fsa and we can do that. Let's say you've got a medical FSA and you want to find out if you can cover your contact lenses. I'm going to start typing that in the search bar, contact. And when it comes to when you search, kind of less is best. I'm going to say contact lens because I don't know if it's lenses or lens. So I'm going to search by this. and. Lo and behold, here we go. Contact lenses and solutions are a covered green expense with a medical FSA. So that means I can feel pretty good using my FSA to pay for these items. I will probably need to substantiate that expense, but this tool is telling me it's probably um, uh, an expense I can use it for. So let's try another search. Can I use my medical FSA to pay for Botox? So first off, it says no results found, but I wanted to point out up here in the filter part, I search for a contact lens Botox because it's looking for all filters. Well, I should have cleared my first filter first. And now that I've done that, Look at that, Botox for treatment of a medical condition. It's yellow. So that means, so Botox is typically used for cosmetic purposes or maybe to treat migraines. So if my doctor is recommending it and writes a letter of medical necessity, then my Botox is probably a covered expense too under my medical FSA. I could do the same thing for each type uh, if I have an HSA, I'm going to remove Botox from my filter. I see the list that pertains to HSAs. If I do medical FSAs, I see the list that pertains to medical FSAs. If I've got a medical FSA and I want to know, gee, can I pay for my chiropractor with my medical FSA? Did I spell it wrong? Chiropractor. Hmm. What about with my HSA? Well, looky there. My chiropractor shows up under HSA. So it may be different for different types of services. So you can use this tool to explore different items and check it out. If you have questions once you look at it and you're not quite sure what you're looking at or can't find what you're looking for, you're welcome to call us. We can try and help. 
or you can consult the IRS publication 502 and 969, um, or uh, consult with your tax advisor. But anytime you see one in yellow, what this probably means 99.9% .9 of the time is so long as you have a letter of medical necessity signed by your doctor, it's probably going to be a covered expense. I'm going to remove this chiropractor filter so I can see all the ones under health savings account that are in yellow. And we see a pretty big list of things that are here. Now, when it comes to looking at items for your limited purpose account, because it covers dental and vision only, we see much smaller lists that show up under there. I'm going to look at the green ones. And when we kind of look at that for limited purpose FSA, it makes sense that they all pertain to some type of vision or dental expense, because that's the purpose of that product. So you can um, filter by your account type to limit it, or you can unfilter all of them. You'd have to, since we started filtering, you'd have to start from the beginning to unfilter all of it. But nine times out of 10, you're here because you have a particular account type you, you want to check for. So making that limitation makes a lot of good sense. All right. I am going to stop sharing this for just a moment and go back to the PowerPoint. Give me just one moment. And what you are seeing here are uh, three different ways you can contact us at Optum. Both that phone number and the URL is on the back of your payment card. If you have a, a medical FSA, limited purpose FSA, um, or HSA, um, and this is the information will be included in the presentation that we'll post to your site within two weeks. Uh, but I'm going to pause here for uh, questions that you have on what we talked about today. Lenny, our first question is from Cheryl. She says she can't log in. Okay. 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 Hi, Cheryl. Um, two things. First, the uh, tool that we looked at today is a what we call a pre-login resource, meaning you don't need to sign in to get to it. You just access optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee and just scroll down the page to get to the medical, uh, qualified medical expense tool that we looked at. Now, if you want to log in because you have an account and want to access your account, you will need to have set up a health safe ID, which is a username and password. Um, so I'm not sure if you haven't set that up yet or if you're getting an error message when you try to log in. We'll see if she follows up with us, Lenny. And in the meantime, we'll go on to the next question. Perfect. It's from Michael. Is there a way to know if something is not only approved, but also won't flag a need to track paperwork or show proof or reasoning with the IRS? So, uh, Michael, thanks for the question. You would want to log into your account to look at uh, the activity and transactions on your account. If when you log in, you have an expense that needs further substantiation, you'll get a pop-up box that says something needs your attention. And when you click on that pop-up box, it'll take you to the claim in question. That's how you'll know you need to submit something. If you just wanna know the uh, status of something, you can go into your account and look at your claims. And if it doesn't say needs attention, then you are good to go and you will not need to submit further uh, paperwork. And Lenny, hi everyone, Nicole Jardine here. I, I just wanna to add to that a little bit. Um, what Lenny just described is in regards to the, the FSA side of things. Um, if your question is surrounding an HSA, 
Um, it, it is account holder responsibility to ensure that they are spending their funds um, on qualified medical expenses, which is why we do recommend you know, verifying with the, the different tools that Linny has shared here today with the IRS websites and publications, as well as our qualified medical expense tool. Um, it, you won't have to provide proof to the IRS unless you are audited at some point. And then at that point, they will require you to provide documentation for every distribution that has come out of your HSA to show that it was for a qualified medical expense. So we do recommend um, saving those receipts um, in your EOBs just in the event that you ever do need to provide that information back to the IRS. Fantastic call out, Nicole. That's why she's here, folks. Um, absolutely. And I see that Michael has put in here that he's an HSA. So what Nicole just described pertains to you. The documentation is for you to have and hold with your other tax documents for each tax year. And then if you're audited for a particular tax year, you'll want your documentation for what you spent that year. Lenny, Cheryl did follow up and tell us that with the login, it is an error message. She said she will give it some time. Do you have any additional um, advice for her? Hmm. I guess it depends on what the error message is. Um, if she is, if you do give it additional time, Cheryl, and you are still not, I mean, I don't know if the error message is that you were using an incorrect username or password, but you can also give us a call at the number on the back of your card or this 866-600-4984 um, to have a representative help you get logged in as well. We're all caught up on questions right now. Michael got the information he needed. He says he's gonna track everything. Okay, Keith has clarified that he was also getting an error message a while ago, but it is now allowing him the ability to log in just fine. That's just an FYI. Thank you for that, Keith. And I think someone else referenced um, earlier a site access issues. So Cheryl, give it a try again and see if uh, you're able to log in. I think I've heard Nicole advise clearing cash and cookies. I don't know if that's pertinent in this situation, Nicole. Anytime technological items are in question, <laughs> I always recommend clearing cash and cookies. There you go. We'll give it a couple of minutes and see if we get some more questions. Maybe people are typing. Lenny, we've got a quiet group today. You did such a good job of covering everything. Oh, um, well, appreciate that. But I did forget to mention the part about HSAs being between you and the IRS. That's great advice um, when it comes to HSAs. Michael does have another question. Sure. Is it true? Is it true that places like CVS prevent you from accidentally purchasing something with your card? So, Michael, um, you know, when it comes to the HSA, because I think you mentioned you were the HSA person, the card will so long as it's accepted um, being used at somewhere where MasterCard can be used it doesn't really block you from most things. Um, now with the flexible spending account, limited purpose spending account for those of you on the line that have those, those are more limited and should limit you to IIAS. Yes, um, those that uh, retailers that use that technology or by retailers that um, uh, that subscribe to 90% of the, or more of their products in their store being FSA eligible, those items should clear just fine. But your HSA is a little more wide open um, because you are, we are not auditing each and every transaction on the HSA for you. Lenny, we have a question from TS. What are the due dates? And I'm not sure if you're following that or if you need more information. 
Um, I guess, um, TS body, what are the due dates? Um, if you're referring to um, documentation due dates or using fund due dates when it comes to the medical FSA and the limited purpose FSA, um, that is based on your plan documents and your plan design. Um, you do have, you do need to have your service or product spent or paid for by the end of the year. And then you have some run out time. Um, I believe is that April 30th? April 30th, yep. To get the That's receipts right. in. You have until April 30th to make your claim and get your receipts in. We have another question from Ryan. Can I use my HSA money to pay for my daughter's braces? So Ryan, so long as your daughter is a tax dependent, the IRS would allow you to use your HSA to pay for your daughter's braces. She doesn't need to be covered on any insurance plans for you to use your HSA money. And then we have a comment from Connie. She's saying she is HSA and her card did block her from using the card on certain vitamins from Kroger one day because they were not coded as eligible. Hmm. Okay. It does happen from time to time, Connie. So when that does happen, um, you can use your personal funds to pay for those items. And if it's an eligible expense, now these are vitamins. So vitamins by and large by themselves, you and I going and purchasing items to take them because we choose to are not an IRS eligible expense. If it is by the recommendation of a licensed physician and they uh, will um, provide information on a letter of medical necessity, you could use your personal funds to pay for those and then request a reimbursement and save your letter of medical necessity in your tax file for the IRS as proof. We have a question from April. She has an HSA also, and every time she uses her card to purchase things, there is a $2.50 charge. Yep. So April, um, there is a $2.50 charge if you use your HSA with a pin at an ATM machine to do a withdrawal or reimbursement from an HSA. Um, to actually use your card or to request a reimbursement, those transactions do not have a fee from Optum. We have another question from Michael Lenny. What should you do if you accidentally purchase something that does not qualify with your card? Yep, and it happens. Um, and a couple of ways of looking at that. Um, Michael, your HSA. So if you have used your card in the same tax year to pay for something that doesn't qualify and you've paid for something personal out of your own pocket, that was eligible for about the same amount, um, you could, if the IRS audited you that year, use that receipt instead. When it comes to the IRS audit of your HSA usage, um, it's based on your spending in that tax year. I'll give you an example. Let's say in 2022, you spent $1,000 out of your HSA and, and you would have gotten a tax document from Optum, a 1099 SA that said $1,000 in distributions, you wanna make sure that you have $1,000 worth of receipts proof to back that up. If you don't, and you need to put money back in your HSA, um, contact us at Optum. We can work with you to do a correction and put those funds back in your HSA and then issue you a corrected tax document for your withdrawal amount that year. Lenny, our next question is from April. Can she use her HSA for her adult braces? Hey, April. Um, if it's for your HSA, 
Braces are an IRS eligible expense for you, your spouse, and any tax dependents. Our next question, Lenny, is I read somewhere that funds must be in the available funds and not in the stocks that are growing when making a purchase. If you money, if your money from the stocks to the funds are their fees, I may not be using the right terms. Okay, I think I understand the question. Just let me know if I'm off base. So if you want to spend money out of your HSA, your card with your HSA will only recognize the cash balance at the time that you're trying to make the purchase. If you need to move funds from your investments over to cash to be able to spend it, you can do that anytime. There's not a fee to do that. You just need to do that proactively yourself and before you are ready to spend it. So give yourself at least a couple of days uh, for those funds to show up in the cash portion and that your card recognizes. And you can log into your account to look at your available balance to know that that's occurred. I hope that answered your question. If you need further clarification, let me know. April, I think we've gotten all your questions answered, but if we have not, just let us know. And right now, Lenny, it looks like we're caught up unless we didn't get all of April's questions answered. Okay. Hey, Crystal, I'm seeing one more question from April. I don't, I don't believe we answered. She was asking about, she said, do preload card to the limit or is the money already there in each paycheck? Do funds get deposited? We have not answered that one, right, Lenny? I don't recognize that one, no, Heather. Okay. We have it, but we can, no problem. I did, I did ask her as a follow-up if, if she has an FSA or an HSA. She mm -hmm. said she has an HSA and a limited FSA. Okay. Um, I believe what she's asking is, are the funds available up front or? Sure, sure. Available and April, as with deposited? Your, yeah, April, with your HSA, it works a little differently than your limited purpose FSA when it comes to what's available. With your limited purpose FSA and for anyone that has a medical FSA, those funds are available at the beginning of the year for whatever amount you chose as an election for that plan year. And you're not able to change that during the course of the year. So the funds are available to you upfront. With an HSA, you can make a contribution change anytime during the year. So those funds are not available upfront they're available to you as the funds are deposited each pay period. So whatever your actual balance in your HSA is, that's the funds that are available for you to spend. And if you have any investments and want to spend that, you could move that over to your cash and spend it as well. Sorry, I missed your last question there, April. And thank you, Heather, for catching that. Our next question is from Jan. I saw on eligibility for dependent care FSA, summer camp is eligible. Are there any limitations or conditions to use this benefit? I mean, I can help with that one. Um, I, I, great question. Um, mm -hmm. While summer day camp is an eligible expense, um, any overnight camps would not be considered as eligible. I think that that's just an important factor to put in there. Perfect. Thank you, Nicole. Our next question is from Melissa. I have not taken advantage of FSA and HSA. Where should I go as a beginner for more information on HSA and FSA and which one would suit me best? And since, um, hey, Melissa, thanks for asking that. And since you're saying you have not taken advantage, I think the first place that I would refer you to is your, um, your state of Tennessee partner for health resources to understand your plan setup and plan design. Um, and I'm sure Heather, Heather or Crystal can speak to that or provide some links. When it comes to understanding what an HSA is and what an FSA is, I would encourage you to go to optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee 
and in the uh, section under that um, banner, there are some fantastic resources there, some flyers and some links uh, to videos and educational pieces that can help you get up to speed on those. Hey, Lenny, this is Keith. Can I also interject there as well? Of course. Uh, thanks for the question. I also want to clarify that I know we have a mix of different types of employees on the call, but between state, higher education, local education, local government right. employees. I want to make sure, because I'm not sure who's asking the question, the flexible benefits that you hear us talking about on this call are not offered to local education or local government employees. So if you're one of those, you would want to check with your agency benefits coordinator. Um, they perhaps offer flexible benefits on their own through a, through a different administrator. So the flexible benefits here are only offered to state and higher education employees. Um, you do have to enroll in the flexible benefits within so many days of your hire. So if you know, if you if you're a new hire and you've been employed for six months or more, it's likely uh, you're not going to be able to enroll in flex unless you have a special qualifying event such as a, a marriage or um, you know a new baby or something. We do the enrollments each fall, typically in the month of October. And as far as the health savings account, you, in order to have one of those or to qualify for one, you have to be enrolled in a qualifying medical plan, which would be our consumer directed health plan or CDHP for state and higher education employees, or to have uh, an HSA if you're a local education or local government employee, you have to be enrolled in the local CDHP. So just wanna add those distinctions. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Perfect. I also added links into the chat for our FSA page and for our CDHP slash HSA webpage. Lenny, we had a follow up question from April. Can I prepay from my banking account, the limited FSA? How do I do so? Can I? Trying to wrap my head around the question, April. I'm sure it's a great one. Can I prepay from my banking account? I assume you mean like a personal banking account. The limited FSA. How do I do so? April, are you asking if you can pay from your own personal account and then later reimburse yourself mm -hmm. from your limited purpose? Okay, well, you can absolutely do that. If you do pay for an expense out of pocket and, and if it's a vision or dental expense um, and you pay for that expense out of pocket, you can definitely file a claim and get reimbursed out of your limited purpose FSA. You can either file a claim directly from um, your consumer login. Once you get to optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee, click the file a claim button and you'll be prompted to walk through some steps to complete some information and then attach a detailed receipt or EOB uh, detailing what that expense was. And then we will reimburse you and, and we can reimburse you directly back to your own personal bank account. You just need to make sure that you add an external um, account on the website first so that we have your banking information there. Otherwise we would send you that reimbursement via check. And additionally, if you'd prefer, we do have a, a paper claim form that you could utilize instead of um, filing a claim directly through the website. Thank you, Nicole. We have a follow-up question from Jan. She wants to know, is the summer camp eligibility only limited to a certain age of children? Uh, all dependent care expenses for, for children um, have, a, have an age cap of 13. So you can reimburse yourself for expenses out of the dependent care uh, for qualifying children through the age of 12. Thanks, Nicole. Michael has a question. He can't find CPAP supplies on the QME search tool. I don't see it on publication 502 either. How do you learn about something you can't find on the list? Hey, Michael. Um, yeah, thanks for calling that out. I'll need to bring that up with our uh, folks who developed the tool. CPAP supplies 
um, when prescribed by licensed physicians are deemed by the IRS to be eligible expenses um, to use your HSA or your FSA for. Um, you may need that probably one of those circumstances where you'll want to get that letter of medical necessity um, signed by uh, the licensed physician who's prescribing that. If anytime you run into something that, that isn't on the list, um, you, know, you can check with us, you can check with a tax advisor, you can do, um, you know, go to the internet and Google reliable sources as well to gain further information. Thanks for letting us know that. Don't see any additional questions. Michael just said thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, we have a question from Tracy. I am wanting to transfer my old HSA account to my new one. I have an amount invested. Can I transfer this as well, or do you suggest I keep it in my old account? Hey, Tracy. Um, yep, thanks for asking. You can, there's no limitation on the number of HSA accounts you have. So you can keep as many as you want and keep them sep separate. Or if you're looking for convenience and you want to consolidate, you can also consolidate HSAs anytime. It doesn't impact your contribution amounts for those years and there's um, uh, no limits on how many you consolidate. When it comes to the invested part, I'd say it depends on your old HSA plan if you love those investments, you're not paying fees for those investments, um, you know, there's, it's a personal choice that you'll want to make if you want to keep it. Um, if you're looking to consolidate, you can liquidate those investments and then move it. Um, sometimes that's market timing of when you decide to do that to make sure it makes sense for you. You'll want to check with your HSA provider of the account you want to move to find out their process, get their forms, find out if there's any fees involved. You'll just provide them on their form your Optum account number uh, to transfer into. Lenny, we have another follow-up question from April. She has a CPAP from a previous state she lived in, and she has a letter stating the need. Will she have to read in Tennessee? Uh, um, I think that's getting more into the medical part of it. Um, your, if you have already have the CPAP, I'm, I apologize, I don't use one. I don't know if there's ongoing expenses that you're looking to use your existing account for. Um, if there are, and you're trying to find out if you can get your uh, use your HSA to pay for those expenses. Um, I don't know, and Nicole, I don't know if you know if those letter of medical necessities have sort of a expiration date, if you will. Um, I don't think they're state by state, though. I agree, Lenny. I don't think that they are state by state. Um, and April, I, I know that you have the HSA with a limited purpose, but I first want to discuss this scenario with a full purpose FSA or a medical FSA, letters of medical necessity are only good for one year and a new one would need to be signed and provided back to Optum for continuing expenses to be approved after that first year um, goes through. For the HSA side of things, um, it, they normally do have an expiration date or the doctor normally puts something on there that this is good through this certain date. If you're trying to purchase more um, items for that CPAP after that letter of medical necessity expires, I would recommend having another one just tucked away into your records just mm -hmm. in the event that you ever get audited from the IRS. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have another follow-up from Jan. If one parent works outside and the other parent works from home but can't care for a child, is the summer camp benefit still considered to be eligible or it has to be both parents work outside the home during summer. Do 
dependent care expenses are considered eligible if they are allowing you to work or to look for work. So mm -hmm. as long as that is the case, then that would still be considered an eligible expense for you. We have a question from Tracy. Will I be penalized for cashing it out since I'm only 54? Hey, Tracy. Um, if you're cashing out or consolidating an HSA, um, those are not tied to ages like uh, an IRA or 401k would be. So your age is irrelevant. With an HSA, if you take the cash out, you'll need to have qualified medical, dental, or vision expenses to uh, sub substantiate to the IRS if they audit you in the year you cash it out. If you're just transferring it into another HSA, there is no tax consequence. Lenny, our next question is from Andrew. I have an HSA from a previous employer that has funds in it, but I have a different health plan and not a high deductible plan. It is with Optum. Is it okay to keep and keep funding? Hey, Andrew. It's always okay to keep your HSA. Those are personal bank accounts that you get to own, save, and spend for the rest of your life. Um, but when it comes to funding it, right now the IRS ruling is that you do have to be a participant in a high deductible health plan in order to fund it. Now, if you're an employee of the state of Tennessee, you need to be a participant in state of Tennessee's eligible HSA plan in order to fund it through payroll. But if you're just funding it with personal funds, you do need to be a participant in a high deductible health plan. You say that right now it's not a high deductible plan. So if that's the case, you would not be funding your HSA while you are not participating in a high deductible health plan. You can keep saving it and you can keep spending it. Thank you, Lenny. We're all caught up and I will remind everybody that we have about 10 minutes left if we have additional questions. We'll pause for a minute and see if anybody has any more. Michael is asking, what ultimately happens to unspent HSA funds? Hey, Michael. Um, you know, unspent HSA funds are treated the same way that other bank account funds that you have um, are dispersed at the death of the account owner. Now, with an HSA, the funds will automatically go to your spouse if you have one. Uh, or I say automatically, that's who is designated as the receiver of those funds um, once they attest uh, to you know, providing documentation of the account owner's death uh, and their legal spouse status. Um, now, they're the only ones that can choose to take the money or have the HSA uh, renamed in their name and then keep treating it like an HSA if they want to. If there is not a legal spouse, the funds would be paid out to the estate of the account holder unless the account holder has named a beneficiary. You can easily do that with your Optum account. You can go online and do that. You can log in and say manage beneficiaries and view who you've named or change it or set up a new beneficiary. Highly encourage you to do that. Um, it helps uncertainty and it helps um, the folks who you really want to have that money more easily take advantage of that money. If you name anyone other than a spouse as your beneficiary, they'll receive the funds in the form of a check. Um, and those are considered taxable to them in the tax year that it was dispersed. You can have one or more beneficiaries. It can be people or it can be organizations. Lenny Keith also post in the chat, if you have an HSA with Optum, it is best to log into your account and specify a beneficiary name. Good advice, Keith. Wholeheartedly agree with you. Angela would like to know what is the last date 
for Qualifying Reimbursements for 2023 FSA. For Qualifying Reimbursements. That will be April 30th of 2024. But you Correct. would need to have incurred the expense by December 31st of 2023. And you have until April 30th to get it submitted. Your, mm -hmm. Michael has a follow up question. So HSA funds are eternally marked for approved health expenses until you pass away. There are not options to transfer the funds into other banks or investments. So, Michael, the beauty of an HSA is the funds can be spent for the rest of your life. Now, if you spend it on qualified medical expenses, it's not taxed. Once you turn 65, you can spend the funds on anything you want, but you still have to pay the tax. We're all caught up on the questions in the chat right now. Michael says, thank you. You're welcome, Michael. Great if questions, just, you guys. I did put in the chat, if everybody wants to look, um, a, an email address, benefits.info at tn.gov. If you have questions after this webinar ends or any time, you can always put in a ticket and um, with that email, and Heather and I will get back to you as soon as we can. We'll just give it a minute, Lenny, and see if anybody else types in a question. Sounds great. Practice our patience. Hmm. Hopefully you're all still seeing the screen if I'm sharing that has the contact information for Optum. If you have additional questions after the session. We are seeing it, Lenny. Perfect. Well, I'm not seeing any additional questions, so I'll thank you all for joining the program today, and we appreciate your positive feedback in the chat. Thank you, Lenny, for doing such a great presentation, and Heather, Nicole, and Keith for answering questions. We hope you've learned some useful information and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Have a great day.